Modern animism makes the oldest spiritual belief easy for today's seekers to understand, practice, and learn. Stay tuned and grow with us. Hi, it's Laura Jouts, your host of Modern Animism Radio. Happy New Year! You know, I talk a lot about sovereignty and connection, but I don't think that I've ever done a podcast on oneness. Practicing sovereignty and connection leads to oneness, but what is that? How does it happen? I'm going to talk about that in today's podcast, but first, you know the drill, where you've got to acknowledge the everything. To acknowledge the element of earth and thank you for our bodies, food, and senses that allow us to perceive and appreciate beauty. Thank you for our foundation, stability, and all the things that help us to feel grounded. Acknowledge and give gratitude to air for our breath. Breath is life. I thank you for our words and the vibrations that travel through the air that allow us to communicate across distances and realms. Thank you for bringing us the whispers of our ancestors, guardian angels, and loved ones from across the veil and our own inner awareness. Acknowledge the element of fire and ask that you help us to keep our inner fires burning with purification, passion, and motivation. Thank you, fire, for helping us to create, destroy, and transform things that give us the experience of being alive and flowing in the stream of life. Acknowledge and give gratitude for water for intuition, dreams, and feelings, and connection with the unseen and unknown. Thank you for that mystery that prompts us to go deeper. I give gratitude to our human, plant, animal, and mineral ancestors. As earthlings, these are our brothers. May we never forget and always treat them with the respect that they require. I give gratitude to all of you who are listening, sharing the show with others, and commenting. Modern Animism was recently honored with making the top 15 animism podcasts in the world by Feedspot. We made the number 10 spot, and that could not have happened without your support, so thank you. Your comments, views, shares, likes, all that matters. You matter. You're part of the Pan Society community, and I appreciate you. If you want to get closer, let me tell you about what's going on behind the scenes. For 2024, I'm starting Meditation Mondays. It's a live stream on YouTube at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. We'll meet and do a 20-minute meditation. It's the easiest meditation you will ever do. There's no special breath holds or techniques, no mantras, no relaxing, no nothing. We're absolutely going to do nothing for 20 minutes. Clearly, you can do that alone, but when people gather, the energy amplifies, even if it's virtual. So I encourage you to mark your calendars and come. There's about a five-minute window before and after, so allow 30 minutes. We're going to be talking about oneness here today, but on Meditation Mondays, I hope you will actually experience it. It might not happen the first time or the 20th, but if you keep at it, it will. There is a silent retreat coming up in February. I'll link to that in the show notes. This is also a great way to experience oneness, and I will talk about why in a minute. In my private group, which is free, and you're invited to join, we regularly do moon circles and talking circles. I wouldn't say that these create a sense of oneness, but they can create a sense of unity, which is a step closer. So join my free group and get on my mailing list, and I'll send you updates on that. In my free group, we're also doing a 365-day challenge to share yourself. That started December 1st. And it started out as a 31-day challenge, but some liked it so much that we're turning it into a year-long thing. That's been amazing for me to both practice sovereignty, connection, and oneness. Maybe I'll talk about how in an upcoming podcast. It really requires vulnerability and honesty, which a lot of people aren't willing to engage in. But if you are, come on over and join us. Your growth will skyrocket. There's a lot of other stuff going on, but if you want to know about that, just check out the free group. That's the best place to stay in touch because I'm honestly, I'm not good at email. Even though I have a newsletter, not that great at it. So it's easy to join. Just a click of a button and you will be interacting with open, warm, safe, honest people who will accept you just as you are. And who doesn't want that? So we're here today to talk about oneness. And what is that? To me, it's who you are. It's who we all are. 
the path through pan society is sovereignty, connection, and oneness. But that's really an illusion because that implies separateness, and we're not separate. We live in a physical reality that appears separate, and we're doing a deep dive into who you are and awakening to the fact that you're not separate. For me, that sovereignty part has been a process of releasing the programs that I accepted from my parents, ancestors, and society to reveal who I am, what I believe in, and what I desire. Now that sounds selfish, but it's not selfish. It's actually an expression of self-love. If I'm showing up with a mask that is contained by social dictates, I'm not being myself. I'm kind of a robot that's restricted by social values, laws, shame, and guilt. And I don't want to be ruled by anything. But what keeps us from becoming that mad dictator is the need to belong. It's the desire to connect. And shame is actually a great emotion because that's what keeps us connected. Shame is the alarm bell that says, don't get ostracized or abandoned. You need them. So that desire to belong keeps us uh, in a space where we can contribute, help, give, and reciprocate so that we're all uplifted by my presence and I don't have fun or succeed at the expense of others. And that's a good thing because we're all connected. A rising tide lifts all boats. And if I am trying to get the sea to rise just for me, well, it doesn't really work that way. It'll backfire. I can't take power from others. I'm the source of power. I have to learn to generate my own. The same is true for love. I can receive the love and appreciation that others have for me, but if I depend on that, the well will become dry. I am the source of it, and there's an endless supply. So I have to learn to make my own and refresh it. I could give other examples of that, but let's just stick with those two, power and love. So how do I generate an endless supply of power and love? Through living in oneness. I invite you to try this. Find something beautiful to look at. It can be a picture of your child when he or she was a baby, a hot man or woman, a sunset, the ocean, the night sky, anything will do. If you can um, have a live view, that's even better. Now, what I want you to do is to relax and really see this thing. See the beauty, not how it looks, but how it feels. Let the wonder of this thing touch your heart and open it. And stay open to that until the line between you and it disappears. That's oneness. We're always that connected to everything. Trash, germs, sharks, paper, books, ideas, people, everything. We can see this through the phenomenon of co-regulation. In the field of trauma therapy, there's now this big push to stress co-regulation. A lot of people call themselves empaths, but we all have the ability to feel the energy around us. Some are more tuned in because of a blow to the head exposure to toxins, or because they have a trauma history. Trauma makes us pay more attention to potential threats so that we stay safe. So our micro perception increases. This is essentially what it means to be highly sensitive. Anyway, the more sensitive we are to the energy around us means that we perceive tiny changes that others seem to not notice. If we are reactive to these changes, that probably causes problems and can make us more emotionally dysregulated. When we say that someone is too sensitive, that's what we're talking about. They have reacted to something we don't perceive, and that reaction is really strong. So co-regulation is about noticing this and using your own calm to calm them down. This is being talked about in trauma circles, particularly to parents because kids learn how to do emotions from us. If we're calm, they're calm. And calming yourself helps them to feel safe so that they can calm down too. I share this point to kind of highlight whether we know it or not, we're always connected. When you go into the woods and spend time there, whether it's meditative time or not, you feel better. The woods are co-regulating you. It's natural and calm, and so are you. The thing with the strongest energy is going to influence the weaker one. So always make sure that that energy is you. And always make sure that you're in touch with the love or the light energy inside, and you will never lose your center. 
That's oneness to me. Animism is oneness. It's not about belief. It's about the lived experience of being in the flow. When you're in the flow of love or light, there's no separation, no self, no dis-ease. The Tao says, one does not walk into the forest and accuse the trees of being off-center, nor do they visit the shore and call the waves imperfect. So why do we look at ourselves this way? When we cultivate sovereignty, we begin to drop the things that aren't us, all the I'm not enough beliefs, the I have to be somebody drives, and the I'm a victim stuff that might be handed down through our generations. We open to the boldness and dare. We make mistakes. We go down an unhappy or unfulfilling path, and then at some point we realize that sometimes we're a drop of water, sometimes we're at the bottom of the wave, sometimes the crest, and eventually we become the whole ocean, then the whole universe. That's the point of sovereignty, to experience all aspects of yourself. Doing that creates compassion because when you see someone who is homeless, you see yourself. Maybe you weren't ever homeless, but maybe you identify with the feeling or experience of being adrift and separate from your family. When you see someone who's grinding and going from one high-powered meeting to another, you see yourself. Maybe you didn't have that level of stress, but you did it in another way where your eyes went dead, you were checked out, and your life was about overdoing. No matter where you are, you are expressing something that is part of the whole. Some things are more comfortable than others, but all of them are potential learning experiences if you use them to move closer to the center of the hub, where change is imperceptible and slower. For that, you need to develop stillness. You need to move past the boredom and relax. Release all inhibition and resistance, and you'll become yourself. You will become one. If you've ever had the experience of bliss, this is what I'm talking about. There's no thoughts. Nothing to do, nothing to want. It's just pure love, pure you. No separateness. Meditation's a way to do that. It's not reliable. It doesn't happen every time. But it's a fantastic practice to help cultivate the habit of stillness, letting go of resistance, and being fully present in the now. That's the only way to be in a space of oneness. Taking a time out for a silent retreat is another. Like I said, we have one coming up in February in the Virginia mountains near Yogaville, surrounded by nature, which you're welcome to join, but you can do a silent retreat in your house. You don't need to go anywhere or be with anyone. This is available to you at all times. Taking a break from the noise, electronics, and busyness is always a great idea. Another way to do this is by taking a pilgrimage. We did this last year during my spiritual retreat. We went to the Holy Island and did the last three miles across a tidal mudflat that recedes twice a day. It's the same path that pilgrims have walked since the dawn of Christianity in England. And I had no idea beforehand how significant that little three-mile walk would be, but it has inspired me to do a longer pilgrimage, and I have two scheduled for 2024. The one to St. Michael's Mount in Cornwall is sold out, but there is still room for the pilgrimage in Greece if you want to do a baby pilgrimage. This is not the Camino de Santiago where people walk for hundreds or even thousands of miles with a backpack in a tent. This is for ordinary people <laughs> who are not endurance athletes who want to enjoy nature, be introspective and silent in the company of others, and sleep in a comfy bed at night. Another path is Qigong. When you stand for a long period of time, you get bored. It also gets painful. The only way to keep standing is to find your center. If you are off balance in any way or have any resistance, it's going to be painful and you have to shift or relax. When all your energy channels are open, you move into a flow state. That's ecstasy. It's oneness. It's enlightenment, meaning that everything is out of the way for the light that is always there to shine and you become your true face. What meditation, a silent retreat, pilgrimage, and standing qigong all have in common is boredom. <laughs> boredom is a call for you to re-enter the circle of creation and do something. When you resist the call and push past the boredom, boredom you become still, quiet. Resistance stills and the light shines. In that space, all becomes knowable. 
If you enter into it with the intention to figure out a problem, you might find that in the next hour or day, or even moment, the answer appears. If there's something you want, the way opens. If there's something that needs to heal, release happens, forgiveness, and then peace. I can't say what will happen because every time it's different, every time is new, but I can say that it happens when you cultivate it. Stop doing. Notice subtlety. See how subtle you can still be and notice how the matrix dis disappears. I'm sure that some of you will be inspired to pursue this. You want to experience it for yourself, and my suggestion is to not pursue it. In pursuing it, you move further away from it. It's not something that can be caught. You have it by releasing desire. Rumi says it best when he says, fall in love in such a way that it frees you from any connecting. I love that. Reading Rumi is a great way to get that energy into your heart. Or read the Tao Te Ching. Listen to classical music, specifically Mozart. They say that his music was channeled from the angels. And being with anyone who did whatever they do when in the flow state creates that co-regulation and makes it easier to be in the flow of oneness. Being with people who understand that helps because it reinforces that in you. The more you do it, the more synchronicity you will see in your life. It'll guide you to more and more if you pay attention to it. Some call them messages from your guides or ancestors. Some say it's their higher power. I don't really care what you call it, but experience it. To me, it's the big picture of what animism is all about. It's the lived experience of oneness. It's the lived experience of being love. Before we wind up here, I think it's valuable to share what the opposite is so you can have some contrast. Because contrast is how we define reality, right? We know this because it's not that. Well, recently I got an end-of-the-year email from a spiritual leader whom I love and respect and admire. It was passionate, and it was inspired by fear. And fear is the opposite of love because it takes us away from that still connected center. In this letter, he talked about all the ills of the modern world, sex trafficking, war, racism, and oppression. Those definitely are not desirable or peaceful things. No argument from me there. But the suggestion was to take a side, support a group of people or a movement, and as Martin Luther King Jr. said, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. So let this be your self-check. If you find yourself taking sides, remember that you are that. If you find yourself engaging in destruction or separating yourself from someone for their politics, religion, or beliefs, remember that you are that. The only way to heal the hate, fear, and suffering is to neutralize it within yourself. Meet everything with acceptance and love and co-regulation happens. Love takes over and becomes the most powerful force in the room. You don't have to convince anyone what's right. You don't have to control anything. You don't have to heal anyone. Just be love. That's enough. Rumi said the same thing more elegantly when he said, The minute I heard my first love story, I started looking for you, not knowing how blind that was. Lovers don't finally meet somewhere. They're in each other all along. The peace, love, and light you are looking for is you. <laughs> be you. That's oneness. That's animism. So thanks for tuning in, guys. You've heard from me. I want to hear from you. Feel free to comment or join the conversation in our private group. We're also on YouTube if you prefer that. And if you have show ideas, we'd love your suggestions. Much love to you all. Happy New Year. I'm Laura Giles for Pan Society, and thank you so much for being here. Ciao.